from Bandai comes a new, blue, and glittery release. We're taking a look today at the Bandai Movie Monster Series Godzilla Minus One Japan Theater Exclusive. Now this is a very special figure that I was really excited to get, for two main reasons. Firstly, it's my first Bandai Movie Monster Series figure I've ever gotten, and it's also my first Godzilla Minus One figure. As of late, it seems this figure is making waves among collectors, and rightfully so. This figure really caught my eye right away, and it's exactly the type of figure that's up my alley. Of course, it's a Sofubi toy, but not only that, it's a beautiful clear blue vinyl with glitter in it. How much more could I ask for? At the time of this recording, this is the third version of the Bandai Movie Monster series Godzilla Minus One figure, the first release being a more screen accurate colorway, the second one being a Godzilla Store exclusive metallic colorway, which looked really cool and I wanted to get, but ultimately I opted to get this version because I think it's the most unique. And of course, it's a theater exclusive, meaning that these are being sold exclusively in Japan at movie theaters and I guess some physical shops there. But now let's take a closer look at the figure itself. Now when it comes to the sculpt on this particular version of the figure we're looking at, it is a little bit hard to make out considering this is more of a semi-translucent blue vinyl and it's unpainted so the details aren't as visibly there. But there certainly are some great details that are present throughout the figure. The head sculpt looks fantastic, which we'll take a closer look at. But the overall silhouette of the figure, I think, is the real highlight when you're looking at a blank figure here. And it certainly pops. And you may have noticed that the tag is no longer attached to the figure. That's because when I was trying to do this review, I was getting so frustrated by the fact that this piece of cardboard was just blocking 40% of the figure. So I ultimately decided to just cut it off. I know that may be blasphemy to Movie Monster series collectors, but ultimately, while I did save the tag, I did not want it attached to the figure at all. I feel like it was just hindering the figure, especially with such a nice silhouette. Of course, this design is based off of the new Godzilla Minus One design that is featured in the film, which I have not seen yet at the time of this recording, but I do have tickets to see very soon, and I'm so excited for it. I've heard nothing but great things, and I just really feel like it's going to be a special film. Now, as mentioned, since this is a blank blue figure, there is no paint to speak of, so the color of the vinyl and the glitter are the main elements at the forefront. But just because there's a lack of paint doesn't mean that there's a lack of detail. As we look closer throughout the figure, you'll see that there is plenty of detail throughout the entirety of it. Like I said, this is the third version of this figure, so the painted versions, you can definitely make out the details much easier, but because this is more of a blank figure, it's harder to see unless you look up close. Now these particular shots in natural light, I feel best capture all of these elements of the figure at once. The beautiful semi-translucent blue, the shimmery glitter, and the great detail. You can really see as we get closer that there is quite a bit of texture throughout the figure. We have that bumpy skin throughout the entirety of it. And again, that silhouette looks fantastic. This has got to be one of my favorite dorsal designs on any Godzilla iteration that we've seen. And these couple of shots kind of just show off that semi-translucent vinyl at work here that I've been talking about. Depending on how bright of a light you have behind it, it does come through quite nicely. The pose is something that I like a lot on this figure as well. It does have a relatively wide stance with both the arms and the legs being kind of spread out, but it looks cool. Godzilla does of course have a roaring mouth and the tail does kind of just come straight out, so it is kind of a shelf hog in that respect. I do wish maybe that it kind of curved up or to the side a little bit, but it does look really cool. I do think overall it's a very visually pleasing figure that will look good on anyone's shelf. Here's a better look at the head sculpt just to get a better sense of the detail that's present there. Of course, this is a roaring open mouth pose, so you do get some individually sculpted teeth, which is a great level of detail, especially for the scale that it's in, but we have that angry brow if you can make it out. The very tiny eyes. I am really impressed by this sculpt. I think it's very nicely done, and I am tempted to kind of get maybe a different colorway of this figure. In terms of articulation, this figure has four points, which is in the arms and the legs. The arms and legs actually do spin a full 360 degrees, but neither the head nor the tail have articulation, but that's fine because this is more of a display piece anyway, but it is nice to have those options with the arms and the legs. True to the movie Monster series, this figure comes in at 6 inches tall, and this is what it looks like next to some of my other figures in my collection. So 
So, what are my overall thoughts on this figure? Well, I am so happy I got it, and I think it definitely lives up to the hype. It is such a unique piece that I needed to get my hands on. Just as a collector who loves stylized figures just as much as I do realistic ones, this one hit all the marks. It has that really vibrant vinyl that is semi-translucent, and the glitter, again, that's another thing that I love that I don't have enough of in my collection, but it's done so nice and tastefully in this particular figure. I love the way it shimmers in certain light and the way that it kind of reflects alongside the translucent vinyl as well. While the Movie Monster series has never been a line that I've sought to collect, I do think that with this figure being my first figure from this line, um, I am impressed by the quality and the detail that has gone into it. I don't think for the most part that I'll collect other figures in this line unless there's other things that really appeal to me. But speaking just on this figure alone, I'm very impressed by it and I think that Bandai did a great job. Also, what was really cool to me about this figure was, aside from how unique it looks, it kind of just commemorates to me getting to see this movie in theaters. Godzilla Minus One will actually be the first Toho live action movie I get to see that's a new release, because I have seen a couple of other Godzilla films from Toho um, as re-releases in theaters, but never a new release. So this is a very special figure that's kind of commemorating this moment, and I'll always look back to this figure and think, this was the one that I got when I first saw Godzilla Minus One. And I'm looking forward to that movie, like I mentioned. I've heard great things about it. I'm really excited to see it. But anyway, with this figure, I definitely recommend it if this is something that you think would appeal to you. I think it's definitely worth it. It's such a unique piece to have in any collection. And it's a great sort of commemorative piece, I think, for this particular movie. I am curious to know what you guys think about it. Of course, do you have this version? Or do you have any other version of this figure? Comment your thoughts down below. Anyway, that's going to be it for the review. If you like the content, please consider leaving a like, subscribing, and taking a look at my other Godzilla figure content on the channel as well. Lastly, thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.